Hello, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers and welcome to the automated collection emails. In this training, I'm going to show you an amazing application on how to create unlimited email templates with unlimited invoices for unlimited customers. It's going to be a fantastic training. I can't wait. So let's get started. All right, thanks so much for joining me today. I've got a really special application I wanted to share with you today. I wanna to show you how you can build something like this. I've completed it and I'm gonna take you step by step through exactly how I completed it. Every single line of code, every conditional formatting, show you exactly how you can set it up, how you can customize it. Now this is gonna work for any type of business, any type of company. If you invoice or your customers invoice, you will wanna have an application just like this and you'll be able to sell this application to your customers or sell the features of it because it's gonna automatically generate emails based on a due date, based on unpaid or paid, based on the number of days, whether we're talking about before or after the due date you can set up multiple emails and you can simply just select an email template and then click the button to send emails it's gonna automatically generate emails just like that so we've got a ton to show you and it's gonna let us know exactly how many emails were created and it's gonna keep track of every single email that's been created in every single template so we've got a ton to cover so we're gonna get started right away on this I'm gonna to try to make it uh, as comprehensive as possible moving slowly on the parts where I think Think going to be very helpful but I want to keep it moving along so it's not too long of a training probably try to keep it around 60 minutes less if I can do it I try to keep my trainings around if you do like these trainings I only ask one simple thing they're always free all I ask you to do is just to subscribe to the channel and make sure you click the notifications icon bell that's gonna ensure that you get a notification as soon as I release these every single week generally on Tuesday of course you can get this application for free absolutely free all you need to do is click the links down in the description and then of course with your email or Facebook I'm gonna go ahead and send it right over to you if you would like 150 of my best applications I've got an incredible promotion right now that helps us keep these free it's hundred and fifty workbooks in a single zip file complete with a library so you can single click to open the workbook single click to view the video it's an incredible library of my best work if you want it it's just 37 cents per application for a total of $56. That's the current promotion. I'm not sure how long I'm gonna keep that open. So go ahead and look for the links down below. That's gonna help us out if you wanna pick up 150. All right, let's get started. I'm gonna do a brief overview of this application and then we're gonna get right into it. So basically it's made up of email. We're gonna be able to track as many emails. If we wanna create a new email template, we just select the name, the number of days when you want it to be sent out. And of course, if it's before or after the due date, uh, send the email to this will generally be uh, the customer email so we can put in customer email and what that's going to do is going to send it automatically to the selected customer email so if we wanted to do 15 day warning we can do that 15 day and then we'll say 15 days before the due date maybe we want to create an email before that send it to the customer email and this is going to preview and what does this mean what this means is when you send an email through Outlook, do you want that email displayed? You want it to show on your screen or do you want to just send it right away? Probably early on, especially while you're programming these applications, you'll probably want to say yes, I do want to display the emails. Just like you saw the email that I created, they were displayed and not sent. However, once everything's working good and you like the way it works, there's really no need to preview it first. You can just send those emails right away. We'll put in the subject 15 days and until invoice is due and of course you can put in also dynamic four and then we can put in dynamic content we got tons of dynamic content invoice balance here that's going to be the invoice balance so we have that subject that email can contain the customer email the customer first name the customer last name the invoice number the invoice amount the invoice balance the invoice date and the due date those are all based on data where is that data well we've got a list of invoices here on the data this is just a list of invoices some of these things have balances some don't some are some have payments some don't just some 
criteria, just some data here. And also we have a list of customers, just some basic customers. And we have a list of customer. Notice that I've got three email templates right here and the dates if those emails were sent, those emails. But watch this, this is gonna be pretty cool. So I'm gonna add this, I'm gonna keep it real simple on this one so you don't watch me type all day. That's gonna bore you and probably make you fall asleep and I don't want you falling asleep on this training, that's for sure. Con customer first name, we're gonna put that in. That's gonna be replaced by the customer first name when the email is generated. Alt enter is gonna get you the next line inside a cell. Hello there, we said hello. And your invoice is due in 15 days. Please pay it so I can eat this week. Okay, and then Fred, Fredders. Fred's our favorite name, we know that. Fredders, if you watch these trainings, I love that name. Okay, Fred, Fred is gonna send it. Now all we need to do is save that email. I'm gonna click save and it's gonna put it all the way down here at the bottom. If you wanna select it again, we just select, it's gonna load those details. But what did it also do? It also added this here, this email right here. That means this specific template is now added to the customer list. Why is that important? It's important because I don't wanna send the same exact template to the same customer on the same invoice. And so what we do is we track that and that way we can filter, that way only the customer gets one 20 day warning or one 30 day warning or one new invoice or one 15 day. That keeps us from duplicating, sending the same customer the same email template. So that's great. So as we create new email templates, they get added here. And of course it's really unlimited. You can add as many as you want. It's gonna be dynamic in that sense. So it's really, really handy. Okay, great. So we understand you know, we, how to just create it. And of course, I'm gonna go into detail exactly how we created that. Pretty simple. But uh, basically, we've got some conditional formatting here on the table. Let's go into the conditional formatting. That's the most simple part. So we're going to take a quick look at that. And when we select a row, that row is going to be highlighted. And that's really simple. If you haven't seen these videos before, I'm going to walk you through that. It's going to be based on this selected row. Notice that we've selected uh, row 15, and that's located in B4. So as soon as we select a different row, B4 is going to change to 14 and B2. So all we need to do is set up some conditional formatting based on this number now. So if we highlight this, you go into the home, conditional formatting, manage rules, you're gonna see four different rules here, most of which this is the one we're gonna focus on at the moment. That's the one, so all we have to do is say B4 is equal to row, that's it. That's all we have to do. Now, and what we're gonna do when we edit that row, all we see is that we formatted that, and all we've done is give it a dark blue on the fill and then a font of a bold and a white. That's actually a white color, it can't be seen, but that's a white. So what that's gonna do is every time we select it, it is VBA that's actually going to place a selection change event. When I make a selection, not anywhere else, but inside this table and only when there's a value here, only when there's actually a value in column D, VBA is gonna take care of that, putting whatever row we've selected in B4. That's one thing. The other thing that's gonna run is loading. Now there's a macro that's gonna take this information, it's gonna load it up here. And we've used data mapping. What I really like about this, if I say, if I wanna add something to it, I can do that, just type in manager. And it's just gonna be added automatically. So the next time we go out and go back in, it's automatically saved. I'm gonna show you how to do that. We're gonna use data mapping in this. If you're not familiar with data mapping, I've used it in some trainings. I'm gonna walk you step by step, nothing to worry about. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and there's some hidden cells here. I'm gonna show those here by changing the font to black. They're the same as the background color. You'll wanna do that too. And this is called data mapping. There's two ways we're gonna data map, two different ways, and they both have different purposes. The first of which is this data mapping here, this cell region, and why do we do this? We're using this for two purposes. We're gonna use these cells. When we load this, when I select it, I'm gonna use this data mapping to load the details from this table inside this form. And also when I save it, when I add an email and I click save, it's gonna, we're gonna use that data mapping here so that we know what cell to pull from. And what is that again? Well, here's it. Email name is E3 and we have send days is gonna be H3 and we have send when is going to be J3. So basically every single 
column is mapped to a specific cell in the form below. And why do we do this? Because we've taken pretty much seven or eight lines of code and drilled them down to three. Now, if you have a large table with 20 or 30 different items, it's still going to be three lines of code. So this is a great way to save lots of lots of coding. So data mapping is really impressive. If you haven't seen it yet, that's one way I told you there was actually two ways. So what's the second way? Again, what I just showed you, when I made that update here, when I changed that and I added the word manager here, how did it automatically save to the table here? How did it automatically save? Well, here's one thing we need to know. What I need to know is when I make a change here to this cell here, this E6, what I what do I want to do? Now, I know the row here. I know the selected row. So we need, we need three things. Anytime we save data to a cell, we need three things. We need a sheet name. We know it's email automation. That's the sheet we're working on. That's not, we're not saving to a different sheet. So we automatically know the sheet name. We need a row and we need a column. Okay, we know the row is here in select row. So now all we have one missing piece to the puzzle. What's that? That is the column number. So when I make a change here, I need to know the column number. And this column number is here. I want to save it here. What is, it's actually a merge cell. So what is this column? This column right here is what I need to know. I need to know 10, column 10. So I need to know to save this in row 16, column 10. So where am I going to get that 10 from? I've got to find that 10. Well, we're going to use data mapping again in a different sense. So if I move over here to the right a little bit, we can see that it says 10 right here. Now, how do we get this 10? We notice that all the column numbers are associated with the same rows. In other words, we're focused on row 6 here. This 10 is also in row 6 here. So how do I know? If I make a change to this column here, equals column, we're going to look, we see obviously column is column 5 here. So we know that that column 5 and I want to find that 10. Where am I going to find the 10? It's all the way over here. What column is this? equals column. This is column 18. So if I take the existing column and I look for a value 13 columns greater, 13 columns greater, 5 plus 13 is 18, and I look in the same row, I'm going to find that 10. So that's how we do it. So basically what we're going to do is we're just simply going to, our target row excuse me, our target column is 5. So in order to, for us to find that 10, we're going to do target column, the, which is 5, plus 13, which is going to get us this. 18 equals column 18. Shouldn't erase it. So that's going to get us a column 18. So now we know the row. We know the row. The row stays the same as 6. The column is 18. So I can extract that 10. That 10, of course, this can all be hidden so people don't see it. That 10, I'm going to use that 10 as the column number. So what does that look like in VBA? And I would do that with the same thing on every field. So notice this column is column 4. This column is column 7, right? This is column 4. This is column 7. So everything is mapped based exactly on exactly 13 columns different than the original. So when we go into VBA, now I need to know, when I go into VBA and I tell VBA, when I make a change to anywhere from E3 all the way over to really K6, because we're using this as a merge cell, all the way from E3 to K6, then what I want you to do is I want you to look exactly 13 columns over in the same row. If there's a number there, take that number and use it as the column to save that change in. So what is this? So now we know the row is 16. The column is whatever we have over there. And now we know exactly where to save that change. And that's a change event. So when user makes a change. Now there's a couple of caveats, right? When we select a specific cell or anything in the table, notice that there, that information is loaded. Well, that's also a change to the table above, right? That kind of, That's a change as well. So when we make that kind of change, we need to differentiate between those two changes. One is the change when the user actually makes us a change like this and the other is a change when we actually make this specific selection change so we need to differentiate between those two how can we do that well when we select it what we're going to do is we're going to set a specific cell to load and it's this cell b3 so when we look at that real quick you can see it goes to true and back to false so what we're going to tell vba is when we make a change to this if b3 is true that means it's loading that kind of change we should ignore don't look for the row here. Don't look for the column here. Don't save it back to the database because B3 is true. Only when the 
only the change we make here is when b3 is false. When that is false, we can then make those changes and save it down to the table so it saves automatically. All right, so I wanted to show you that. Let's get into the VBA part of this and show you just what I explained now. And you can see it now in VBA. So we're going to go into the Developers tab. If you don't have the Developers tab available, of course, you can add it into the file here and the options here. All you need to do is look for the Customizer. We're going to make sure your developers selected there. Alt F11 is a great shortcut that will get you there. Also, Developer and Visual Basic will get you there. We're going to take a look at the on sheet code. That is the code that's located right here in email automation. It's just a little bit of code. I've got a little bit of code here. We've got code that's going to save our emails and update, and we have a code to send our emails. I'm going to go through every single line with you. Just what we are discussing, this is the worksheet change. Of course, if you haven't found this, click worksheet and then click change here. That's what we're going to focus on. Now, again, if we're focused on just what I said, the range E3, I'll drop this down a little bit so you can see both at the same time here. E3 is nothing, right? Again, if not intersect, target range E3 through K6 is nothing. What does that mean? When you see that, it's a little bit confusing. Not and nothing cancel each other out. When you have that, that means the user has made a change. If the user makes a change, any cell between E3 and K6 and there's one other condition, just what I had spoken of. We want to make sure that it won B3. It's actually two other conditions. B3 is false. We want to make sure that the email load is not happening Then when the user actually makes those changes. And, of course, not on new emails. And B2 is going to let us know that it's a brand new. When a user makes those changes, why is that? When we add a new one, right? What, why don't we want to save it down below? Because we don't have a row number until we actually save it. Right? So without that specific selected row and before, we don't know where to save it here. So we first want to save the email, run the macro. Then once all the information gets saved down to B17, then we can assign a row. So it would not work on new emails. We want to make sure the user fills in all the information before we save anything down below. So that's why we actually do that. That's, that's why we want to make sure that we're only updating for existing and not new emails. Okay, so the, well, again, we mentioned the things that we need. We need an email column and we need an email row. Those are both long whole numbers, so we're going to dimension those. And then one thing I want to do is I want to make absolutely sure that the 13 columns to the right in the exact row that there is actually a number here. If there's no number, then we got a problem. We can't save it below. We don't have a column. So the way to ensure that we do have a number is going to use is number, is numerical in this case. Is numeric. We can do that if is numeric. What are we going to do? The target row, remember, we're only focused on the target row. The target column, which is the current column that they made the change in, plus 13. We're looking for this value. I'm looking for this value right here. I need to make sure that that value is actually a number. So if is numeric equals false, right, then, well, of course, we can't. Or B4 is empty, right? We need a row. We need a column. This is our column. We also need a row. B4 is our row, right? B4 contains our row. So if either one of those, if we don't have a column or we don't have a row, we cannot save it to the table below. So we need both of those things. That's going to ensure that we don't have any bugs. So if either one of those is blank, then we're just going to exit on missing row or missing columns. Okay, next up, once we is, do have a row, we do have a column, we can then assign them into variables. It's not necessary, but it is really nice and clear for the code. So we're going to set the email column to cells. We don't necessarily need to uh, state a sheet because we are on code. Remember, we're on a code. If we're in a module here, we do need to specify a sheet. However, it is assumed that when we're coding on the sheet, and we don't need to specify a sheet. So we don't need to write in sheet one or anything like that because it's assumed. But if we're going to be referring to another sheet, we would need to add in that. Okay, so cells, we're using cells. Why are we using cells in our range? We're using cells because both the target row and the target column are whole numbers. They're variables, so we need to add them. We can't, we don't know, we can't use H or J or any letter on that as far because we don't know the column. It's going to be dynamic. So in that case, we're going to use cells. So the target row, the row stays the same, and the target column plus 13, that is our email column. Next up is the email row. We know that's located in B4. Once we have both of those, we can then save our information. We know the sheet. It's the current sheet. Now all we need to do is cells, the email row, the email column, 
value, the value of that is going to be equal to target value. It's just that simple. And then also what we want to do is wrap the text, right? If I don't wrap the text, here's what's going to happen. Let me show you. I'm going to comment that out and I'm going to make a quick change to something and see what's going to happen if I don't do that. So I'm just going to enter that. And you're going to see it's going to expand all the way. So if you get something like that, we really don't want to look at that. That's not going to be helpful to us. So the best way to do that is just simply to wrap the text equals false. It's not going to wrap text. It's going to just extend it out. That's why we have it. So if you ever have that issue, all you need to do is just make sure you take that range and then you click wrap text equals false. And then as soon as you make a change, it's going to automatically extend it over there and not wrap it inside the cell. So that's kind of important as far as the look and the feel. All right, well, that's it. That's all we need to do based on the changes. But there's one more little thing. Every time we make a change, especially something specific like this one, if I make a change 20 day email send, if I change that, I also want to update it inside the customer here, right here. I want to make sure that it's updated here. How do we do that? Well, we can do that in some special ways here. And of course, that's only for existing existing emails. When it's a new email, of course, we're not focused on that. So how do we do that? Well, let's take a look at there. Our first email is located here. These are This is customer information, but our first email goes here. What column is this? This is column seven. Okay, so we know that that's column seven. And the next one for the next email, we'll column eight and nine, et cetera. So if we know that our first email is based on column seven, and we also know that our first email is located here on row 13. If we know our first email is located on row 13, and I make a change here, I know it's 13, but I, what I need to do is I need to change the customer row, the customer, the, the main row for the customers, which in this case, it's always going to be two. So if we know that, and we can then assume we know the column. Why? Because we know we're making a change to row 13. So we all we need to do is deduct six to get that column. So if I make a change to row 14 here and I and I make a small change to that, I need to make sure that we're updating it here as well. So we know that simply just subtracting six. So now this header gets updated so that the email that's going to be, the name of the email is always going to be updated here. So we can do that with just one line of code. So again, if the user makes a change to E3 specifically only on a change to E3 in this case, what do we do? In that case, if they make that change, then all I need to do is update the customer header. In this case, that's sheet three. That's our customer list row two. We know the row. Email row 14 minus six. So that's going to be eight. Column eight is actually going to be changed. So in this case, if it were this case, however, for this case, it would be seven and this would be eight and this would be nine, et cetera. And this would be 10. So that's all we need to do is just a simple subtraction. And that's going to take the target value. So anytime we make an update to this, it's also going to update our customer. Customer. And we need this because we want to make sure that we know when we're actually sending out emails. And if they've been sent to a specific customer, we put in the date. And then, all right, so we understand that. Let's go over just a little bit of the selection change. There's just a tiny bit of code here. Again, when a user makes a selection inside this table, we want to do two things, just two things. One, place the row here. Two, run the macro to load it. We're going to go to the load macro and shortly. That's all we need to do here. If the user makes a selection change between D13 and N9N, and we also want to make sure one thing, we're not just the selection any row, we want to make sure that D actually contains a value. If there's no value in D, there's nothing to do. So we want to ensure that we can do that with and range D and the target row value does not equal empty. Then what are we gonna do? Just those two things are place the row, the selected row inside B4, and then run the macro to load the email. All right, so that's it. That's it for the all the on-screen code. Let's get into the functionality on how we create and add, save these and delete the emails, and then we're gonna get into how we create the emails. All right, all of our code that we're gonna focus on for saving, loading emails, and deleting them, we're gonna be located in the module called Email, Save, and Update. And the first thing we we'll wanna do is we're gonna dimension email column as long and email row. Multiple macros are gonna be using these variables, so we wanna dimension them above all of these subs so that we can use them throughout. We don't need to keep dimensioning the same ones per macro. Okay, so we got those as long. Email save, we're gonna focus on with sheet one. Now we wanna make sure that at least an email name has been entered. So if that was left blank in E3, we're gonna let them know that uh, with a message box, please add an email name before saving. That's gonna be the least that they should add. 
So if that's left blank, we're going to let them know the warning. Otherwise, now we're ready to set the email row. And where's the email row? It's going to be the first available row. We're going to use column D because we know D is required. So that is always going to have a value. So the first available row, we're going to use X and XL up and then plus one. So that's going to get us in this case 17. That is going to get us the first available row that we're going to assign the email row. Next up, we're going to use our mapping. And this time we're going to move from column four all the way to column 10, four to 10. And what I'm going to do when I'm saving is I'm going to look here in row 11. I'm going to determine what is in E3 and I'm going to put it right here what is in H3 and I'm going to put it right here and we're going to run a loop so our email column variable is going to run from 4 all the way to 10. That's what I mean by data mapping just three lines of code for next loop is going to put all this data in this form into the row here so that's all we need to do with this lines of code for email column equals 4 to 10 that sells the email row we know the email row we've just defined it here we know the email column we're looping through it the value of that the email column is going to be equal to what it's going to be equal to this cell whatever is in this cell here right sells row 11 email column so in this case row 11 column 4 column 5 column 6 so whatever's in this cell place here we do that with just this line of code here so once we have it, that's going to save all the data. So these three lines of code save all that data. And, it, and when we have a lot of data, we have 20 or 30 columns, it can be a huge savings. Okay, so next up, what I want to do is I want to add the email. Once we've saved it, I want to add the email to the first available column here. In this case, it's going to be K. So what do we do that? I'm going to go uh, row two, of course, in this sheet three, determining the row, we want the first available column in this case column not the row column on the right side so how do we get that what well, we determine that is going to be so now we're going to add it in sheet three row two row two we're going to save it in that header row row two what about the column how do we get that column again we're going to use in this case we're going to go all the way to aa2 a2 would be the last possible in this case of course you can increase it if you have a lot of emails you can add this as many as you want here almost and then what we want to do is we want to find the last column with a value that's going to get us the last column with a value when we add one that means it's going to be the first available column so now that we have the column now that we have the row and now that we have the sheet we can place the value and what is that value it's going to be whatever's located in e3 that's going to place our brand new email right here in the header that's going to see it and then what what else do we want to do again we have in this case i've got some button sets one button set is going to be the existing email group and another one is going to be for a new one that's already hidden this button set right here and so we'll just unhide those so we can see those and what is in that new email group well all we need to do is bring it down we see that's the save email and cancel save email cancel we only want those button sets to appear when we have a new record because the only two options we have a user are either to save it or cancel it new so that is called the new email group the other one's called the existing email group and that's the add email button and the delete email button those two buttons we only want to see on existing emails so we want to make sure that we update the button sets now that we've saved our record it's no longer a new one so what we want to do is that new email group we want to hide that using mso false and then what we want to do is we want to show the existing one that's for the existing we want to show that using msoc true the last thing is again this email is no longer new it's now uh existing email so we're going to set b2 to false telling the email is no longer and we also want to do is we want to wrap the text that's what i mentioned we want to wrap the text again anytime we save that i want to wrap the text so that it doesn't you saw what happens when we don't wrap it expands a lot okay that's it that's all we need to do to save it very very simple but what about load when i load it what do i need well of course we need to know what row we already know and again we're going to use data mapping but in this case it's basically reverse in this case i'm going to determine what is i'm going to run a loop from four to ten once again and i know the row and whatever's in this row in that column i'm going to place inside e3 i'm going to place inside h3 so this is basically the reverse data mapping reverse it that's all we're going to do so again with sheet four we must have those things that i said we must have a row number we're going to get that into b4 if b4 is empty for any reason we would have to exit the sub because we can't load anything we don't have a row we're going to set b3 to true remember we want to set email load to true we want to make sure that those changes don't get 
save back into this table and create a loop, an endless loop. So the first thing we want to do is set B3 to true. Before this macro is over, we're going to set it back to false. We're going to set the email row located in B4. And again, we're going to run another loop, but this time it's exactly opposite. And this time, we're taking the information from the table below. And we're getting our range here located in, of course, row 11 and the email column. We're going to take that information and we're going to take it from the table, from the table and place it into the form above. Just three lines of code to do that. Again, also making sure that our existing email group is set divisible and our new email group is also hidden. Again, also setting the new email to false. Once we load, it's no longer an email. And then the email load to false. That is it. Adding new. How do we add a new? When we click add new, what do we want to happen? I want to do a few things. I want to make sure we clear out the selected row. I want to clear out the, all the information and also make sure that when you run clear contents, when you have a merge cell like this, that merge cell must be included. So in this case, E3 through F3 must clear the contents. Or in this case, E6 through K10 we must clear the entire contents through using the colon between those. If you have an error because of that, it's probably because you forgot one specific field or cell. We cannot use a comma delimited here between E and F. We must include the whole range, and I'll show you that when we clear the contents. So I want to clear that. I also want to mark the new email true. I want to clear the selected row, and I want to clear all the information. That's just what we're going to do in the email. And Also, I want to update the button sets. In this case, I want to display the new email group, and I want to hide the existing email. So that's just what we do inside this macro. We're going to set B3 to true. That's going to set the load to true. And of course, we'll set it back to false just again. We're going to clear all the contents. And as I had mentioned before, we're going to clear B4. That's the selected row. E3 through F3. That's the merge cell. So anytime we have a merge cell, we need to clear the colon. H3 is a single cell. J3 is a single cell. E4 through I4. Again, that's a merge cell. And of course, E6 through K10. Those are all merge cells. So we need to clear the contents out. Again, we're going to set the load to true in this case, and then we, we don't need it. We don't need it twice there. That's not necessary. Okay, then again, we're going to update the button sets, existing email group. We're going to make sure that's false because it's now a new email, and we're going to set the new email. Very, very simple on add new. Cancel new. What do I need to do to cancel new? It's very simple. If I want to cancel this new, all I really need to do is select this. And I want to make sure there's a value in D13. So as long as there's a value, we can select it. So that's just what I do inside the macro. Cancel new is going to do just that. Select D13, assuming that there's actually a value. If there's no value in D13, that means there are no existing emails yet. And we would not want to keep the user in this save new until they actually save an existing one. So in the cancel new, we do just that. In the cancel new, we do just that inside the macro here. If sheet one D13 equals empty, then exit the sub. There's nothing to do if there's no existing. Otherwise, sheet one select. Very, very simple. And of course, how do we do that? When we select an individual shape, right click on the shape and assign macro. That's all I do is just click here and assign that macro. And I did the same thing for every button. Make sure when you do that, you also assign the macro to the icon as well, holding down the control, clicking on both, right clicking, assign macro, and then we're going to assign that macro. That's all I've done in that case. All right, so now you understand how we add an email, but what about delete? Delete is coming up next. And on the delete, it's pretty simple. When we do that, we're going to focus on sheet one, and we always want to make sure that they actually want to delete them. So are you sure you want to delete this email? Yes, no is the option. Delete email is the title of that pop-up. If VB is no, if their answer is no, then we're going to exit the sub. Otherwise, if B4 is empty, we're also going to exit the sub. We have to have a row that we're going to exit. So in other words, so what I want to do is I want to basically delete this row. I had something here. I just moved it over to here. That's important. I moved it over here in case you saw it. That was a quick change. I'll update you on that. We're going to show you that in the next macro. So basically, that's going to allow us to delete these rows without any issue. So we're going to delete these rows. But what I also want to do is make sure that we delete the corresponding here inside this table, too. So we need to do both of those things inside that. So we're going to set the email rows to whatever's in B4. We know that's our email. In this case, it's 15. And then because we're going to say the email and the email row, entire row, delete. That's going to delete it based on sheet one. But what about inside the customer? We also want to delete that. We're going to use the same one. Email row minus six, the same thing. We're going to use 
any row, in this case row one, entire column delete, that's gonna delete the entire column right here. So again, using that, we can use any row, that's gonna delete the column because we need to just delete the corresponding column inside the customer as well. Okay, great, so that's it. And then all we're gonna do is gonna go run the macro that's gonna add new, that's it. That's all we have to do, we just went over the four macros. So now you understand how we're gonna save, how we're gonna load those emails, how we add new, cancel new, and delete. Okay, let's get into the send macro and that's the email that we're gonna run and I'm gonna go over that with you right now. Before getting into the code, let me walk you through exactly what we're gonna be doing and what the code's gonna do so that we can get the results that we want. First thing we want to do is determine all the emails. We're going to loop through all these emails. We've got to know which ones we should send to who. So we're going to start out at 13 and go all the way to the last row. And we're just going to determine which ones to sell. So we need to know. And the last one. So what we need to do is determine exactly which ones to send and how. So the first thing we want to do is figure out if it's going to be 20 days after or 20 days send. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that into an advanced filter. I'm going to take that information and I'm going to put it right in here. I'm going to determine a date based on that 20 days before, 20 days after the current date. In this case, you know, it was probably 30 days. We had the last one was 30 days. Today's actually July 25th. So this is actually 30 days after. So in this case, 30 days after would be something like this one before. So we understand that if we're going to be sending invoices 30 days before, we need to look for any invoices that's going to be from the current day up until the 30 days. So that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna put that information inside here. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna run an advanced filter. We're going to get our last invoice row, in this case 17, we're gonna run an advanced filter based on every balance that's greater than zero and with a due date of less than, less than or equal to August 24th. In this case, any due date that's less than this based on the invoice and over that, that's the one we want. We want the results to appear right here. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna loop through each of these results, get the last row, in this case 13 of our results, and loop through every single one. I'm gonna take the customer ID, and I'm gonna place that, and I'm gonna take the invoice row. I need both of those things. I need the customer ID. Why do I need the customer ID? Because I need to get all the customer information. We can do that with the customer ID. Then I'm gonna take the row of the invoice. This is the original row. In other words, we took the row here from the invoice, in the advanced filter, our original row got carried through over, so that's really important, so we know the invoice row. I'm gonna take both of those items and I'm gonna place them inside our email. I'm gonna place them right here. I'm gonna place the customer ID right here and I'm gonna place the invoice row right here. So once I have that, then I can determine a customer row. Now we do have some named ranges. Let's go over those before we get into the code. I'm gonna go into the formulas and the name manager. We're gonna take a look at it. We're gonna ignore the criteria in this track. Both of those are based on the advanced filter. So let's look at the customer ID. And this is just simply a dynamic named range using offset for the customer ID. And it's based on that first column. Then what we have is we have customers. And all this is, is basically the entire customer table up until the point where we really want, which is just the customer ID, the first name, last name. We're gonna take all of these six columns and place them in a name called customers. We're gonna do very something very similar with invoices. So when we tab over to see invoices, we're gonna see all the invoice data. In fact, this time we've included the, the header rows because I do want the invoice row. So all right, now that we got all of that, we have those name ranges, what I want to do is I want to also place, if we're going to be placing an index, I put some of the information here. So are we gonna send an email? How do we know if we're gonna send an email for a specific customer? So what I wanna do is if the customer allows us to send emails, send them. If not, then no. So I need to extract this no, and I wanna put it on this sheet. So customer row, based on the customer ID, we're adding two. Why are we adding two? If we look in the formulas, let me revisit this. Customer ID is gonna start off on row two, right? We wanna make sure customer's row is gonna start off on row three. So we wanna make sure to add two to get the right row number for that. So I wanna get the right row number. That's why we're adding two. Send email, are we gonna be sending the email or not? What are we gonna do? We're gonna index that customer table. We're gonna use the row, which is located in B8, and we're gonna use column six. Why are we getting column six? Because the yes or no is on the sixth column. That's where we're gonna find it. I need to know whether we should send them an email or not. If not, then of course we just need to exit, skip, go 
to the next customer, the next invoice. Okay, so we have that. What about the rest of the information? What about customer email, first name, last name? I put that all over here. And the reason is because we could delete rows here. So we don't want anything below this because if we're deleting rows, it's going to delete everything. So I placed all of that over here. And if we take a look, where well, you can use the same index. This time we're indexing column four, also the same row. And we're going to indicate that customer email. The column two is where the first name is located, and column three is where the last one. The invoice number, in this case, we're going to focus on B6. B6 is where our invoice row is located. So now we're going to be indexing the invoice information, whether it's the invoice number at 1015 or the invoice amount at 361. Where does that come from? That comes from the invoice row that we just placed here using VBA. So if we take a look at the invoice and we go over to the invoices and we see row 17, we can see the information here for Thomas. And we see that we have a balance of 161 and we have the information, the invoice total of 361 and payments of 200. So we have all that in the due date of August 14th. So we want to bring all of that information in a table. Why do we want to bring it in? We want to bring it in because I, in case any of these variables are used within the email, all I got to do through VBA is look for this particular variable and replace it with this. All I need to look for this and replace it with this. So anywhere within the email itself or within the subject, if we see customer first, it's very easy to tell VBA. It's just a quick loop. No matter how many we have, it's just a quick loop. We can check for this and replace for this. Check for this and replace for this. So that's how we do it. We have customer information and we have invoice. Now you can add a lot more invoice information onto this if you like. And of course the invoice number here, the and it's just updated the invoice date here located in column two and the due date located in column eight. Gonna bring all the information using index all the way from here. So we can use index to pull that information here. Then it's super simple to go when we're creating the email. Okay, so once we do that, then all we need to do is go on to the next and the next and the next. Once we've completed all, we just go to the next email and the next email and the next email. That's all we have to do that. It's just a few nested loops. So we're going to walk you through it right now. So let's go into the mail and we're going to look at the email send macros. And this is the one we're going to be focused on. So the first thing we want to do is dimension the Outlook app. We're going to use Outlook to send emails. So in this case, we want to make sure that the Outlook app is as an object and the Outlook mail is also an object. We're gonna use late binding and that means we're gonna define what those objects are a little bit later on in the code. We also wanted to mention the email row is long and the last email row is long, right? I need to keep track of what email row we're on and I also need to loop to the end, in this case 16, but we need to loop. So we need to keep track of what row we're on and we need to go to the end. So that's gonna be using a for next loop for that. So next we have the email and also we need the last invoice row as long. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna run advanced filters. So we need to get the last invoice row, run that advanced filter. We also need to know the last results row so we can loop through those results. So those are gonna be as well, last invoice row, customer row. I need to know what the row of the customer and I need to know the results row, the last row of the results. So we need to pull that information in. I also need the last results row. And the send days, what are the send days? The send days are going to be either negative or positive. So we're going to need to define that. It's going to be the before, after, and the variable row. We need to loop through the variable rows starting over here, located on row three and going all the way to row 11, row 10. So we're going to have to loop through those. So we need to keep track of the variable row too, so we can quickly add in those details inside the email. And then I want to keep track of how many emails we're sending. So we're going to run an email count. Just a few strings, the subject of the email is a string and the message is also a string and the email too, which is the email address. We're gonna define those as strings. Then we're ready to go. So we're gonna get the last email row. Again, we need to get the last row so we can loop through all of them. If there's no email rows, if it's less than 13, of course, there's nothing to do. So we need to exit out of that. We can run that check if the last here, if the last email row is less than 13, exit the sub, nothing to do. Now we're ready to run our first loop. For the email row, 13 is our first email to the last email row. Again, we're running our loop, 13 is the first one, last one 16, we're gonna run the loop through each one of them. The next thing I need to do is determine both what the send days is and if it's after or before. So we can do that with the following lines of code. The send days is equal to sheet one, E, which is the column and the email row. That's gonna get the number of days to send before or after. It's gonna be number of days to send 
before or after, okay? Before or after. Now, before or after, we're gonna change that to a negative. If it's going to be after, then I need to change it to a negative. So, based on what is located in F, if F is after, if F and the email row equals after, then the send days changes to negative. And how do we do that? We just multiply it times negative one. So the send days is gonna turn that number to negative. And how do we do that? I mean, why do we do that? We do that because what we're gonna do is we're gonna add that to the due date. So if it's a negative, it's gonna be before the due date. And if it's a positive, it's gonna be after the due date. So that's how we do that. It's Now we're gonna focus on sheet two. Sheet two is our invoicing. So we're gonna move over to that. And again, we need to get the last invoice row, add in our less than or equal to, and then the due date, which is gonna be based on the current date plus or minus the current date. So we can do that the last invoice row based on sheet two A. We're gonna get us the last row. And then the last row, we're just gonna exit out if there's no data, nothing to do if there's no invoices. Okay, again, we're gonna put L3. L3 is our criteria. We're gonna put L3 is equal to less than or equal and the send days plus the date. Now, if this send days is a negative, it's gonna be before the current date. If it's a positive, it's gonna be after the current date. So we can use the same send days before or after. It's automatically either negative or positive already. Next up, I just wanna clear any results. Sometimes we don't necessarily have to do that, but in this case, I'm doing it. So N3 all the way through V in a very large row. We're gonna clear those contents out and get ready for our advanced filter results. Now we're ready to run our advanced filter. We're gonna start out using the header rows. That's very important. Header rows, A2 all the way through I, and then the last row that we've already put inside a variable here. So A2 through I, the last advanced row. We're gonna copy that data to another area. We're gonna set the criteria just based on these two information. It's gonna be K2 through L3. That is our criteria. And we're gonna copy it to N2 through V2 here in the range. We unique equals false, we can have duplicate records, that should be fine. In the last row, now we need to get the last results row. We're gonna use, remember, we always used to use, use a column that's been required. In this case, we're gonna use invoice number. So in this case, our last row is 13. So we're gonna use that to determine our last row using end XL up. So our last results row, Column N99 and Excel up. This is our last results row. We do need to run a check to see if there's results so we can run that check to notice if our last results row is less than three. Every time you run an advanced filter, check for the results. So we can do that with the last row. If it's less than result, then what we wanna do is I wanna to go to no results. If it's less than three, that means there is no data. So when there's no data, we're gonna to need to skip to the next in, in email. In that case, if there's one, so we're looping through all the emails until we're at the last one. So in that case, we just want to go to last. So in this case, no results is gonna be all the way down here, no results, and then we're gonna to go to the next email row. But assuming that there are results, we can now set our loop for our results, starting in row three, going to the last results row. All, what I wanna do is now, remember, we need to add in both the customer ID and the invoice. So we need to add the invoice row, which is here, and the customer ID here. And we're gonna put those back into sheet one, invoice row going here, customer ID going here. So we do that with the following lines of code. Sheet one, B7 equals P and the results row. Add in the customer ID, and then add in the invoice located, gonna be in B6 coming from column V and the results row. So then next thing we wanna do is make sure to calculate, this sometimes is automatic, but it's nice to force it to calculate. We really wanna make sure, because we have so many calculations, so many formulas, and these formulas are all based, all of our information is based on formulas, so we wanna run the calculation to make sure that everything gets calculated accordingly. That's just a safekeeping. Sometimes we'll, we, we turn off calculations to make things go faster, so this is gonna force the calculations just in case we end up doing that. Set the customer row. We know that's automatically been calculated here. Sheet eight, B8, now we don't need to add two. I've updated that. Customer row is automatic, so we've done that. I can remove that. We've done that inside the formula. Customer row is gonna be B8. Now what I wanna do is if sheet one B9 equals no, we need to know should we send the email or not based on the customer. If it's no, then we need to go to the next invoice right so if this particular customer customer id1 decides they don't want to get emails this is going to be no we can skip the next one so that's exactly what we're going to do in this line of code if she won b9 equals no or one other thing or what or maybe they already got this. Maybe we gotta check this. Is there already a date? Did they already get this email? So what I wanna do is I wanna check based on the email row, based on the email row, 13 minus six, 14 minus six, 
and check sheet three and the customer row, customer row. Have they received this email? That's what we're gonna do in this line of code. Or, right, either condition, we're not gonna send an email. Or sheet three, the customer row, the email row minus six. If it does not equal empty, then go to the next invoice. And we're gonna skip all of this, and we're gonna go right here, because here's the rest of the loop, next results row. That's gonna to go to the next row. We don't need, we can skip this email, which we're gonna get into in just a moment. So assuming that they're, they've said yes, and this email has not been said yet, we can then continue on. So we can set our email to our subject and our message, our email to located right here inside column G, our subject located in column I, and our email located in column J. So we can set all those into string variables. And that's great, but basically we, we now need to convert anywhere it says customer first names, we need to convert it to the first name or the due date or the invoice amount or anything else, any of those variables, we need now to replace them. This is where our loop comes in. What are we gonna do? We're gonna loop from row three all the way to row 10, looking for this, replacing it with this. And that's just what we do with just the two lines of code along with the loop for the variable row equals three to 10, those rows. Subject is gonna equal replace. We're using the replace command. We're gonna replace whatever's in the subject with whatever is in, we're gonna look for whatever is in AA in the variable, AA customer email, and we're gonna replace it with whatever's in AB. That's all we have to do. Look for whatever's in AA, replace it with what it be. We're gonna do this for both the subject and the message. And we're gonna loop through that. So four lines of code can replace unlimited variables. You could have 100 variables and the same lines of code. So this is really fast, good coding that's gonna make your application a lot faster. These loops are quick and there's a lot less coding time. Once we do that, then the subject's already, the message is already, we can ready to create our Outlook email. And as I had mentioned earlier, we're gonna do late binding. So now we're sitting in the Outlook application to create objects, Outlook application. That's gonna create the application, but not the email. This will create the email, the set Outlook mail, create item zero. With, now we can define it with the Outlook mail, what are we gonna do? We're gonna set the email to, that's the email address that we've updated up here, email to. We've already replaced it with the customer email. We've already replaced it, I didn't go over that. Placing anywhere it says customer email with sheet 11, B11. So that's gonna do, it. it's gonna replace, actually it should be AB3, whoops, messed that up. It should be AB3, AB3, okay, because I had moved it. AB3, okay, that's correct, because I had previously moved it. Now that we have it, so now that we have the email, it's gonna automatically replace, so now we can continue on with our code. So we place the subject and the message, everything's set up. Now all we need to do is determine, are we gonna send this email, or are we going to preview it before sending? And that's gonna be based on this condition right here, located in column H. If this says yes, we're gonna preview it. If it says no, we're just gonna send the email automatically. So we can do that in this line of code. If sheet one, H and email are equals yes, then display the email. Otherwise, send it. Send it based on the option, that's it. On air, set the outlook mail to nothing. We're done with that. Now we just wanna add one to the log. We wanna keep track of how many emails were sent. So we're gonna start this email account equals email account plus one. Then sheet three, customer row, what I'm gonna do, minus six, we're gonna put in that date. Now we need to put this date in the customer. What do I want to do? I wanna determine the customer row, which we already have. I wanna know the column to place it. We know that's the email row minus six, and I wanna put the current date right there. That way the email doesn't get sent again to the customer. So we can do that with just this line of code. Sheet three, the customer row, the email row minus six equals date. Very, very simple. That's it. Then we go to the next invoice. Then we're going to loop to the next one and next one and next one. Once we get all the way down to the bottom, we're gonna look for the next email and the next email and the next email. That's all we have to do. So good, now that we have, and the last thing what we wanna do is message box email count, so many emails were created. And so that's how it happens. So now let's say we wanna send this, oh, let me fix this first, customer first. Okay, fix that label. And so now all we, all that's left to do is run the macro. And that same macro that we just assigned, that macro located email send, email, email send, that located is right here. It's already been assigned to this button. So if we look at it, we'll say email, email send. It's already been assigned. So all I have to do is click send emails. It's gonna generate emails automatically and it's gonna contain all the information based on whatever we had set it. It's that simple. And of course, when you set this to no, you don't wanna display, it's gonna be sent in the background 
automatically and that is how you create automated collection emails completely hands-free unlimited emails unlimited customers and unlimited invoices all right i'm glad i got to show this to you thank you so much if you have not yet check out the mentorship program in that program i teach you how to create your own excel applications for passive income we're creating an incredible accounting application complete with inventory invoicing purchasing a dashboard share and sync and a ton of other features i would love to teach you how to take your excel skills to the next level that's the mentorship program myexcelmentor.com thanks so much we'll see you next week i appreciate your likes shares and your comments thank you very much mm -hmm.